Welcome to Raw Radio. I'm always recording. Who's texting you? Margaret. Margaret's texting you. Yeah. What does Margaret want? She didn't want anything. She said, ooh, a woodpecker. (laughs) (laughs) Awkward. Uh, Yeah. Oh, by the way, look, I have coffee. Um, Yeah, I I got coffee delivered, and I heard that you got coffee delivered. Wait, are we recording? Yeah, we are recording. We are live. live. Gary, how are you? I'm good. So we both got coffee from, you know, they say behind every great man, there's a great woman. And it goes to say that behind every mediocre man, there is a great woman as well. Uh, Because (laughs) both Margaret and Carrie brought us coffee today. Uh, Yours was brought to you within your own home. Uh, Margaret had to uh, come from my home and bring it to me down here at the academy. So all that really means is that she loves me more than Carrie loves you. So just want to let everybody know that wow is this a takeaway for today <laughs> i don't know take two all right let's go um mars your cruise oh wow. my god yeah if you true. didn't that's listen so to true. this episode you have to if you don't know anything about jujitsu i don't care listen to this episode mind blowing what's our takeaway gary well our takeaway is mindset um but uh man to get there it sure was a fun adventure uh, uh listen to the episode the guy's hilarious he is uh he has got opinions uh and he sh- he shares them freely uh and i think people will really get a kick out of this one uh but um you know we don't want to talk too much about the episode but here's a guy that had a mindset i think like very few other people uh he corrected me immediately off air when I said that it was incredible that he got his black belt in five years. It was four years. Um, so and- so to, to frame it, to frame it, to frame it quickly before each episode, we do a quick conversation with the guests. We, you know, touch on different topics and so on. And we want to make sure that we have our facts correct. And Gary was kind enough to ask, you know, you got your black belt in five years. And he was very quickly, very quickly corrected. It wasn't five it was four. Matter of fact, as we're going through the episode, we find that was actually three, three years and 11 months. Oh, 11 months. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, why? Right. It certainly wasn't <laughs> handed to him. Uh, and it's because of what we touched on, uh, his mindset. And um, I don't know of too many people that are going to have a mindset like this, but I think people can take something away from it and, um, and, apply it to their own lives. Uh, You know, he knew that he could beat anybody. He just knew it. Right. And I asked him at one point, is that cocky uh, or is that confidence? Uh, And he said it was confidence and it's a mindset. So how do you, I don't, I've gone back and forth over, you know, my years, my jujitsu journey about, um, you know, do I want to quit? Is this really for me? Um, and it's, you know, it's usually from external forces like my job, you know, I used to have a long commute. Um, I was missing a ton of classes. Uh, what are the two greatest, um, battles you're going to fight about jujitsu? Was it the couch and beer or three couch. and TV couch, beer and TV, <laughs> couch, right? beer and TV. That, those are jujitsu records right there. Much more than anybody you'll face on the mat. Um, but you know, you got to get your mind straight. And, and for me, it was. Um, being honest with myself, you know, who am I athletically? Who, what is, you know, my age, does that have anything to do with it? My physical capabilities, uh, my athleticism. And I think once you start being honest with yourself, you can put yourself into a mindset of, um, you know, where you're going to be able to um, push through obstacles or challenges and come out the other side and continue doing uh, what you really want to do, you know, and, and, and you'll stop making excuses. You know, there's reasons, there's reasons, you know, I, you know, my knee is trashed uh, completely. I can't, I can't roll anymore. Um, you know, I'm, I'm moving away. Those are reasons, but you know, uh, you know, my knee hurts a little bit or um, you know, you, you know, you start making up, these these bs uh ex- 
excuses as to why you can't do things, jujitsu or not. Uh, and, um, and then the next thing you know, you're sitting on the couch watching TV, drinking a beer instead of. Well, you know, listen, it, I, I think as, as humans, none of us like to lose. None of us like to quit. None of us like to give up. By nature, I think that's where we are, all of us in general. Now, the difference between most is, um, and the few, is the justification of our action. So nobody wants to quit just because, and I didn't have a reason. And I think that's why most of the people find a reason to quit. And a reason could be small, could be big, could be huge, it could be out of our control, but there is a reason. Now, there is this handful few of us who have a mental state of, I will never quit. And I will do everything in my power to get to my goal. And sometimes there's huge sacrifices that those individuals make. And, you know, sometimes the impact is, you know, on our family, kids, profession, even our health and so on, right? But the, the mental state, we talk about the mental state, right? So uh, you mentioned a few things like injuries, right? Sometimes out of our control. Yeah, but does that mean that you have to quit jujitsu? I don't know. That could be argued. I mean, you can study jujitsu without being on the mat, without sparring, without being engaged. I mean, I do remember, um, you know, having knee surgeries years ago and I was on the mat a few days after the surgery with my, with a cast on my leg, with my leg ele elevated off the, off the mat, sitting, making notes in my notebook and learning in the class. Now I'm not expecting that from all of my students, or everybody out there, but it's just a perspective of the situation. You know, another person will say, you know, I, my leg well, hurts. Why did you do that though? Did you do it because you loved jujitsu so much or because you knew if you didn't, because I had a similar experience and I, I did it for uh, the reason of, if I don't keep the routine of going, right? I, I tore my MCL and if I don't keep the routine of showing up at, 7.30, Tuesday, Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, um, I'm going to quit. I'm going to fall back into old habits. Um, you know, what, which was it for you? I, you know what? I often say I, I, I'm, I, I'm really stubborn, and that comes from my Polish background, obviously. But, uh, <laughs> but, but it, it's just I, I always said that I've been, I'm too stupid to quit in a sense. You know, but th there was something behind it. There was this stubborn kind of approach in my life is that, you know, I have a goal, whatever the goal is. And despite the obstacles on the way to the goal, I'm trying to always figure out a way how to maneuver between these obstacles to avoid them and yet getting to my goal. Now, granted, it might take longer. It might be more difficult. There might be complexities all introduced along the way. But the point is I am never stopping to move forward because I know the moment I stop, the moment I stop, I start moving backwards now. And the moment I start moving backwards, I am getting closer to subconsciously quitting. And it's not even that my mind quits, my body starts quitting, right? And it's, and it's, it's kind of a big package and it's all going back for me personally. It's going back to the simple fact I have way too much passion for jujitsu. And, and, and jiu-jitsu for me personally is a lifestyle. It's not, it's not me going in, checking and checking out. And I get it. Not everybody has that opportunity. Not everybody, you know, has an abil ability to be on the mat several times a week and, and do this beautiful thing that we do. But that's just my mind. That's how, that's how, that's how my mind works. So if, if, if I am sick, I watch videos. I read, read magazines. I, I make notes. I read my journal. If, I'm, if I was injured with a major knee surgeries, I was on the mat, not training, but learning. I think... Often, and this is deviating from the topic, but often, you know, students look at learning as being on the mat and training. And, you know, if you look at educational system, being in a classroom is not necessary for you to learn. And actually today that's being proven quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You can learn at home, you can learn online, you can learn from books, you can learn from videos. There are many different mediums that you can learn. The point is, are you learning? And that's the question. Right. So well, that's, that's, that's not off topic at all, because you have to have your mindset of, um, you know, I can't, I can't be where I want to be today, or things aren't working out today. 
So you can say, screw it. Or you can yeah. say, well, what can I do? What can I, well, how can I keep this going? You know? And I remember when I was injured and we had a, a, um, anniversary party here and, uh, Adam Redzovic was, was doing a seminar and, uh, he was like, where's your gear? Get on the mat. You know? And I was like, oh, I just, you know, I tore my MCL this week and he was like, pull up a chair, sit down right here, mm -hmm. you know, watch, you can still learn, right? You can't get out here today. Oh, well, you know, you can still learn. Um, and you know, a lot of other people wouldn't have taken that time. But, um, what I, I guess what I'm getting at is, you know, you can, you can say, well, I can't be on the mat today. So, you know, whatever, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put any time or effort into it. You know, that's your mindset where you had a different one. It's like, I can't yeah. be here. So what can I still do to progress? Right. Yeah. And, and, and in some way, I, I agree with Marcio with things that we, he, he's saying, you know, it, it's like once you agree to this, take a break, quote unquote, attitude, if your mindset shifts in, you know, let's pause, everything changes. This is a mental state. This is where you no longer driving to forward. And I, and I know you guys are listening to this and, and some of you are going to say, well, listen, I was sick. I didn't want to come in. I get it. I'm with you. You shouldn't be coming in. If you're hurt, you shouldn't be coming in. If your schedule changed, I get it. Maybe there's financial issues. There's many obstacles in life that you're going to encounter before you achieve your goals, whether jujitsu or not. But the point is, are you thinking I'm going to take a break or are you thinking how do I solve this predicament that I have ahead of me to still continue going towards my goal? Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, like it, this is a reoccurrence all the time in every academy. We all encounter schedule changes. Our work is important, right? So have you thought about going to the instructor and talking to him about it? Saying, hey, listen, my work schedule has changed. I don't know what to do. I want to continue training. I guarantee it that they're going to have thoughts on this. They're not going to tell you, quit. All right. Go yeah. watch TV, get a beer, and what was it? Beer, TV, and what? The couch. At the couch. The enemy of jujitsu. The, the enemy of jujitsu by Marcio beer. Cruz. Couch, right. beer, and TV. Yes. Right there. It all boils down to the mindset state. It all boils down to the perspective. Yeah. How do you get there? And, and how do you think, you know? What's your view on this? What, 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 I mean, I'm sure you have encountered days where one, you don't feel like it. Two, yeah. you hurt. Three, yeah. maybe you're discouraged from yesterday's training. I yep. mean, that happened to me. It all happens. It all happens. What do you do? Well, unfortunately, you know, for me, I, over the years, my life, I've quit some things. And there was some point where uh, during jujitsu, I said, I can't quit. I can't quit. And well, you know, why? And I laid out a reason, a bunch of reasons why I can't quit. And those are more important to me than what will happen if I do quit. I mean, if I quit jujitsu, what I just, you know, I go do something else, right? A couch TV and beer might be the thing. But um, I've, I see the reality of what will happen if I do quit. What will really happen? And what will really happen is that I go back to bad habits. And, you know, he didn't say this really, but it, when you quit, it makes it easier to quit something else. And now, you know, and that builds your personality. It builds who you are, right? So you got to get out of that mindset and you got to say, I got to push through this, right? Decide what a big deal is and what isn't, what's worth pushing through and what isn't, um, you know, think of it as a challenge um, you know, not as an obstacle. And also you got to realize, um, for you gotta, you gotta make the distinction between excuses and reasons. There are reasons why you can't do things, but there's also excuses and you can, you can try and play those excuses off as reasons. So you got to clear that up, you know, think about it, put some time into it, um, as to why you're making the decisions you're making, you know, uh, don't do anything hastily. Uh, think about it, you know? And yeah. And you know, Dave Goggins is huge on the mental state and, and the, how you approach situations. And I, I, I personally think he's a crazy dude, but it's very interesting to kind of dig into his mindset, you know, and I, one of the things that I remember from his book is the moment that you start thinking about 
you know, laying things down or quitting or pausing, you are at about 60% capacity of what you, where you can get, right? And he talks about running and physical activities and other things, other th crazy things that he's done in his life. But there's an interesting mindset because if, if you think about it in a sense of, you know, you know, I can't do this anymore. In his mind, there was 40% more of what you've done is still capable of happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you're essentially quitting a little bit more than halfway into what you can do, right? I mean, it, it, and I'm not encouraging anybody to do crazy stuff like Dave Goggins does, but at the same time, it's an interesting perspective on life, things that we do, mm -hmm. and particularly the mindset that we could have in our lives. Not should I quit, but how do I overcome the obstacles to continue what right. I was doing? Yeah, absolutely. Right? Like, how do you think that reflects on tapping in jujitsu? Because some might argue that tapping is a form of quitting. Uh, well, don't tap and see what happens. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, there, because, you, because you're learning from it. It's not quitting. Tapping is not quitting. And I, I, a lot of people come in with, a, with an ego of I'll never tap or their parents say to the kid, don't ever tap. Tapping isn't quitting if you get up from it discouraged. If you get up from it and go out, oh, you know, that fucking sucked. But what can I learn from it? How can I get better? How do I not put myself in that situation? Um, you know, then, then that's not quitting. That's learning, right? That's the way I look at it. Um, Plus, you want to come back tomorrow, you know? I don't want... Well, I, I think a big, big item to remember is that when you talk about quitting or perspective, you can't ignore the fact of end goal. Right. right? A quitting is stopping something before you achieve the end goal, right? And if, you have, if your end goal is to, you know, a finish a submission and that's it, that's the end and nothing is past that, then I see how often a lot of people will see tapping as quitting. Now, in my perspective, tapping is not the end of it all. That's just a milestone. That's just a step towards the greater goal of gaining knowledge. And if you look at it from that perspective, if my goal here is to learn things and get better at jujitsu, tapping is such a minor step. Yeah. And look it's at not when even, It's not even a point of quitting at that point. And when are you tapping? Are you tapping during a normal training session where you want like, a, you know, I want to come back tomorrow and what can I learn from this? Or, you know, are you a, a massive competitor who's, you know, reaching what they believe to be their ultimate goal? And this, you know, you've worked 15 years of your life for this. You know, that's different, right? Absolutely. I'm not going to tap today. Yeah. Of any day. Um, yeah. But if it's just, you know, you're rolling with your friends, you're in class, uh, sparring session, whatever. Uh, I, I don't, you know, I don't think tapping is quitting. Well, uh, and, and, and I, I think it's something that Marcia was talking about. I, I think the bigger question is not if we shouldn't be asking whether tapping is quitting. I think we should be asking what happens. What is your behavior after you tap? Right. Yeah, that's what I said. Will you sh well, right. Will you show up again or are you done? Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, you get beat by somebody who's new, um, you get caught. Well, I'm not going to let that happen again, I think is a better response than, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that sucked and I'm not going back anymore because, you know, or how about, how about show me what you did? Well, yeah, I don't know if I can put my ego aside that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's uh, that. We learned uh, that. Or, or just, you know, maybe, maybe in a couple of days, hey, what happened? Nah, but, um, you know, grow like anything, man. Just grow from it, learn from it, accept it. You know, it's, it happened. There's nothing you can do about it now, right? It happened. I had a penny for every time I tapped. <sighs> oh, man. I'd be rich. No kidding. I don't, I don't own my own academy. No kidding. Um, yeah, I'd be retired on an island somewhere. I don't uh, know about that. With how many times I've tapped? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I could, yeah, it, I'd be buying dinner every night for people after every open mat. So. Listen, Gary, this, um, this, this, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go no, ahead. no, fine. That's fine. Go ahead. 
I, I was about to say, this was mind-blowing episode. I mean, uh, you know, when we were going into this, I did not expect this. Yeah. Um, you know, again, whether you know jujitsu, whether you are in jujitsu, you need to listen to this. First of all, he's a comedian. He should be friggin' on the stage. That's one. Two, what a perspective on life. Whether you agree or disagree with his view on life, there's, there's a small jams, small lessons to learn from all of this. I hope you guys take some good notes and good takeaways from this one. Yeah. If you don't know Marcio uh, Cruz, check him out. Um, you're going to, th- you're, you know, these stories that you hear about him, you're going to think are unbelievable. But then when you see what he's done, what he's achieved um, and listen to the episode, it'll all come together for you. Uh, so check it out. And uh, I, I think we're done here. Yeah. Off to the next one. All right, sir. I'll see you soon. Peace. Take care. Thank you for listening to Raw Radio. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a review and help us make the show even more amazing. For future episodes, check out our website and follow us on all major podcast platforms. Take care.